Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today I have for you a, another ThinkPad. And as you can probably tell by the approximate size and dimensions, we are dealing with a T-series. And this one in particular is the ThinkPad T480S. Now, if you are completely unfamiliar with the T-series line, the S-series has been around pretty much as long as the T3-digit series has been. And what the S denotes is essentially a slimmer package. So slim, in fact, that when I posted these images of this machine and another one that I'll be featuring soon on this channel, many people mistook them for a carbon. And I really don't blame them. In terms of what they look and feel like, especially before you open them up and see some of the other features, they definitely have a lot of carbon DNA. Uh, in them. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the details and specifications. As I just mentioned, this is the S variant of the T480, which I have had the opportunity to feature on this channel. And if you want more information about that, click up here. This was announced at CES of 2018, so about four years ago, and it sported some new processors. The dedicated GPU option came back in the form of an NVIDIA MX150 Max-Q. We'll talk more about that in just a second. The docking port was redesigned on this generation, so it is no longer on the bottom, and it has a Thunderbolt 3 style dock configuration over here. And it also included, at the very top of the screen, the Think Shutter. Since we're up here, let's talk about some of the specifications. So this is a 14-inch laptop. It does have a 720p web camera with the privacy shutter function. And it did also come in a system that has a infrared camera up here as well for Windows Hello. But that, of course, was optional. The display is 14 inches, and it is a 16 by 9 ratio. The standard resolution is 920 by 1080. And this came in a regular model and a touch model, and as well as one with a privacy guard. There was also a 2560 by 1440 panel that was not available with touch. Now, interesting to note is that you can actually swap these displays. However, one is a 30 pin, one is a 40 pin. So if you are swapping displays, you'll probably need to swap display cables as well. In terms of CPUs, there were two generations that came with this. And I'm gonna just put them up here on the screen for you. Essentially, we had 7th gen Intel 7200, 7300, and 7500 and those were essentially all your dual cores and then on the eighth generation intel rolled around you had i5 8250u 8350u and then i7 8550u and 8650u the good news is that those eighth generation cpus are obviously windows 11 ready not necessarily the seventh gen you can make it work but it's not officially supported in terms of gpus it was the intel hd 620 if it was a seventh generation intel the uhd 620 if it's eighth generation and as i mentioned earlier there was a dedicated gpu option for the eighth generation cpus only and that's the nvidia geforce mx150 max q and that was a two gigabyte card now the RAM on the inside of this is another interesting tale because it came with either four or eight gigabytes soldered to the actual motherboard. And we are talking DDR4, 2133 megahertz. There is one expansion slot and officially it was a 16 gigabyte max. So you either had 20 or 24 total officially. However, 32 gigabyte sticks do work according to many people online. So that means that your actual maximum is 40 gigabytes. However, if you do want dual channel memory, if that is absolutely essential, then eight and eight is the maximum that you're gonna get. SSDs on the inside are the M.2 variety, and it is NVMe capable. The fingerprint reader that you see here is optional. And wrapping it all off, we have a 57 watt hour battery in there, which can get approximately up to 15 hours if you are absolutely sipping that juice. So with that being said, let's do a quick tour of some of the ports and features. On the left hand side, we do have the power plug, which is the USB type C style connector. And this is USB 3.1 Gen 1. So you can actually have power delivery and monitor support off of that. 
Over here is the uh, new proprietary docking system, but it does have a Thunderbolt 3 connector in there. So you can use a Thunderbolt 3 dock, the proprietary docking station, or anything else that you like. And I know that a lot of people miss the mechanical docks that would be on the bottom of the old ones, and I am definitely one of the people that just misses the cathartic clunk. At the same time, though, the idea that I can use essentially any dock that has a Thunderbolt 3 or USB Type-C connector is an attractive compromise. We do have our Gigabit Ethernet, USB uh, super speed, so 3.1 here. HDMI, which is 1.4B standard, if you're curious. A headphone microphone combo jack. And a full-size card reader. And this is important. The T490S and the T14S and every other model that comes after, micro SD only. So this is like the last S model, I believe, that actually has the full-size card reader. So if that matters, I'm pointing that out to you now. On the back, we have a SIM card tray over here, if it is equipped with an LTE or other um, network, wireless network card. And then over here, we have the Kensington lock slot, the exhaust, another USB uh, 3.1 super speed port, and then, of course, a smart card reader if it is equipped. And as I mentioned earlier, there's absolutely nothing on the bottom, no docking connector or anything like that. We do have two downward firing speakers though. And as you can see more clearly on the bottom, the Gigabit Ethernet does have a jaw that kind of hinges open to allow that full size plug to be plugged in. So with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our trusty screwdriver and undo the screws surrounding the case and take a look at what we get on the inside. These S models are usually very easy to disassemble because there's only a handful of screws to spin out. I guess it is worth pointing out that right there is essentially the reset button. And there are a couple of times where you might need to do a diagnostic procedure that involves pushing that. So if you are wondering where it is, it's just right there. All right. So now that we're on the inside, there isn't as much to take a look at as you might think. So we have our two downward firing speakers, our battery, our heat sink uh, solution. And by the looks of things, this is just a integrated uh, GPU. I don't see the secondary heat pipes stopping over where the GPU would probably be living, but we'll see that on boot. We've got a couple of uh, covers here. One is for wireless uh, LTE card, which is currently unoccupied here. We have our Wi-Fi card, of course, and we have our 2280 NVMe SSD hanging out there. We have our singular RAM slot, and this is a 8 gigabyte module. So if there is 8 gig soldered onto the board, that means we're going to have 16 running in dual channel. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much the extent of what you're going to see on the inside of one of these things. So with all that, let's go ahead and throw this back together and turn it on and see what kind of boot times we get with the specifications we have. All right, with everything back together, let's power this on. And that is no slouch, ladies and gentlemen. Very quick and exactly what you would expect from a eighth generation machine running an NVMe SSD inside. So if we take a look, this is the i5-8350U. It does have 16 gigabytes of RAM running in dual channel in there. So that's gonna mean that it's a very peppy productivity machine and it's gonna be able to run Windows 11 uh, with considerable ease. And as we can see, this is the 1920 by 1080 panel. It's actually not that bad. Viewing angles aren't terrible. And it is sufficiently bright. So even though I would probably want a high resolution panel for the work that I do, this is still uh, fantastic. And I can tell you for having to use a laptop in a kind of COVID environment for a while, 
having that fingerprint reader was exceptionally useful, and I think every laptop or anyone that's a serious laptop user going forward will want to have one of these because even if Windows Hello is an option, sometimes if you do need to follow certain protocols, it is handy to have another means of speedy login. If you are looking for one of these used, the minimum you can be expected to pay is around 500 Canadian dollars because these machines are just starting to come off their warranties. Uh, businesses usually have a three year or longer warranty on these devices, and this was announced at CES of 2018. That being said, they are excellent value for money if you can find one in good physical and cosmetic condition. As you can see from the inside of this one, it is actually in quite good shape. We do see a little bit of uh, discoloration on the trackpad, which is not surprising. The keys are in, you, in pretty good condition considering the age of the machine. Screen is in excellent condition. The top case has seen a little bit of wear, but if you can get it at a good price, that there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I actually kind of like a few imperfections on a device like this because then you don't have to be careful with it anymore. It's broken in and it's, it's a working machine. It's, uh, it's something that you uh, don't have to be afraid of putting to work because that's its job. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed taking the look at this T480S. I think it is an important machine primarily because it is the last one that does have that full-size SD card reader, and it's also the oldest variant that'll run Windows 11 natively. So those two things, I think, make it quite the sweet spot. It is thinner, of course, than the T480 because it doesn't have any room for the power bridge technology. So there is that trade-off. And if you don't want a uh, X1 Carbon of the same generation because of the price point, and the X1 Carbon can hold its value a little bit more on the used market, there is nothing wrong with the T480S. If you do have any questions, make sure you're putting them in the comments section down below and I will do my best to answer them. If you have a story about your experience with the T480S, I'd love to hear it as well. Last but not least, if you did enjoy this video and would like to see more, I am going to encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video that I'll be releasing in this T4S series. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will be coming soon. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you next time.